Welcome, I'm Kate. Ad-free versions and subtitles are available. Fall is harvest season. Despite issues with blight, our tomatoes had produced enough for some canning. I busily preserved the harvests from my and other gardens. 137. Preserving the harvests. September 29, 2024. Once I dealt with the morning cleanup of the kitchen, I rinsed the canning jars under hot water. Canning tomatoes is surprisingly easy. I chopped the tomatoes the night before, now just added them to jars. Seeds, skins, I don't care. I squish it all down a bit to release the juice, and that's it. The tomatoes are a mix of everything we grew from tiny to butcher. I also added a kilo of cherry tomatoes from the local produce box that week. Doesn't it all look so much prettier with mixed colors instead of all red? The chopped tomatoes had been in the fridge overnight, so they'd released some of their juices prematurely. I then used my jar stomper to stomp the jars I hadn't stomped manually. I think it's overkill. As long as there is a tiny bit of liquid in the jars at the start, they'll release the juices on their own. I'd soak the seals in vinegar and water for a few minutes before closing the jars with the clips. Don't worry, I'll remember to add salt in a bit. There, a teaspoon for 500 milliliter jar. I just finished preserving the curries from the previous week's box when the next box arrived with more. Not our harvest, but still worth preserving. More dried carrots for our pantry. The next day. Get an idea of temperatures in the greenhouse, I added a thermometer. Even on a chilly fall day, it showed above 30 degrees inside. Now I'm curious about summer. I'd already harvested many of the sunflowers, but the rest were ready for harvest. I'd taken what we needed, so whatever I harvested now would be for the wildlife in the garden. The plan was to dry some of the heads to put back outside when there was less food available. I also removed the leaves from many of the stems so I could add them to the compost instead of having them drop here. I didn't want them to rot away the stems. I need those for next season as trellises. Many of the heads were in perfect shape, tempting me to take more home, but we really didn't need them. I'd rather share with all the wildlife in my garden than preserve more than we need. Where multiple stems grew together or didn't need trellises, I cut the stems as well. I have a few dates with my compost bin ahead of me to turn all the compost, decide how to deal with it all. If I had chickens, I'd feed the stems to them instead. It's what the garden neighbor is doing with my corn plants. I am very tempted to get chickens next spring. I will do my due diligence this winter first though. This bed's layout will be changed a bit, and I'll definitely not need trellises here, so I cut down the stems. The Velvet Queen sunflowers were still in full bloom, but in between stood regular ones past their prime. The birds had already emptied many of the heads, so I added them to the compost pile. Chickens would help with the compost situation, wouldn't they? Ah, darn it, I really want chickens. 
that I want them so badly is all the more reason to research them properly. I need to be sure before adopting animals. But eggs have become harder to source in the area, and we eat a lot of eggs. It does make sense to consider. But there are also many reasons not to get chickens. Responsibility, lack of flexibility, cost, and so on. We'll do the research. We'll take our time. Spring is month away. No need to rush a decision. I moved the last rain barrel from the neighbor's land onto mine, just in time before it passed hands. The barrels will make next year's garden much easier to water. The compost piles were growing. As I chopped down the last of the sunflowers, I kept making plans for how this bed should look next year. That night, I draw up a plan. I spread the sunflowers on the rack shelves to deal with another time. This is not a good idea. The greenhouse is way too humid to dry anything. But I apparently didn't know that yet. At least I'd learned one lesson from the sunflowers I'd taken home. They were spread with room to breathe. I'd had to rescue those at home from a starting mold problem. I'd rescue some of these soon too. It's all good though. I was able to save and preserve the harvest. Now I know how to dry sunflowers properly. You wanna go home? You wanna go home? Let's go. The next day. I got a big load of apples from my garden neighbor. There's still some on the tree, but we're going to see if I even want to harvest any more when I'm done with the current batch. I've got apples in three stages right now. I've got some that are up in the dehydrator up there. I've got some that I already chopped up yesterday there in this small apple form. And I've got the ones that I've prepared last night when it was too late to use the food processor just to speed things up a little bit today. The dicing attachment for the food processor creates the perfect size for both applesauce and dehydrating. I make our own granola and most of our apples end up in the mix. I'd accidentally set the camera to time-lapse again. Why would you make the power button switch mode? <sighs> Luckily, I noticed quickly. We were back to normal speed in no time at all. As I edit this, the kitchen counter is covered in a second batch of apples to reserve tomorrow. This episode might be coming to an end, but I'm still preserving the harvest weeks later. So long, and thanks for being here. If you want to help me make these videos, go to rootsandcalluses.com support. Prefer reading? Buy my novels to support me instead.